and welcome to hey man i'm josh i'm jacob hey man hello how you doing good how are you i'm good hey everybody guess what 100th episode we were both doing it you you did you did pew 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 i did i did guns and you did did it did it dj sounds yeah can we add in in post is possible for us to add in some i would love like some i wish we had like confetti dropping right now i wanted to have the poppers but uh is this the sign for popper yeah you know the 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 confetti ones that you twist and they shoot out i think they do this this is not a good meme for you to have by the way i only did it once you did it 17 (laughs) times in a row so who's really the meme now I don't want to do this. This also doesn't look right. Nah, that's a rusty trombone. Yeah, but the confetti popper is that. Yeah, you, you twist it and it shoots confetti out. <laughs> Happy 100th, dude. Yeah, man. Thank you. Uh, uh, quick, just thank you to everybody who has been along for this ride. Uh, we wouldn't be at 100 episodes if nobody was fucking listening. So we appreciate you guys so much for always tuning in and supporting, telling your friends, telling your family. Um, and as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. None of this would be possible without you. And here is a cheers to another hundred and many more. Fuck yeah. And, and I thought it would be fun to start out today's episode just talking about what our, okay, if you can remember kind of a favorite moment or episode and also your favorite part about doing the podcast. Um, I think my favorite part about doing the podcast is just like, I don't know. The the world has become a very just like it's not scary is not the right word and PC is not exactly the word I want to use but it's become such a a a a monitored place that we live in now that every little thing you say or do is you know you have to be so cautious cuz it's going to come up in you know in the in the future or for whatever or bite you in the ass um and as we are still you know careful about what we say on this pod it is I just you know it's very I, I, the reason I love it is cuz it's a safe space and for us to kind of, you know, deep dive into emotion, deep dive into our our personal beliefs about whatever the fuck it may be. Um, and, uh, you know, as much as I shit talk, it is fun being able to come in here with you every week for an hour and just kind of shoot the shit, even though I see your face way too much. Okay. And can you think of, uh, you want me to give you a second to no, think? I got a moment. Okay. It's, I guess it's multiple moments. I. I love being able to come in here. And again, it's that vulnerability, mm-hmm. but being able to always, uh, try and tell the world about Jackson is really my thing is really what I I, like that memory and his memory. And you know, he's gone way too soon and Mm -hmm. not enough time for him to really show the world showcase who he was and his talents and, and everything that that kid had to offer to this world, he didn't get to offer. So I think my favorite moments for me collectively are just any chance I get to say anything about him and, and really just kind of share uh, my memories and my feelings with him to everybody listening to everybody watching um, and just, you know, doing my best to keep the, uh, to keep, you know, the memory of my best friend alive and well for as long as I live. Well, that's awesome, dude. Um, I would say my favorite part about the pod, it's two things and I can't decide between each one. They're both equally great. First, um, man, I love the, um, I love hearing from people about the effect that this pod has on them and their relationship with their kids or their parents or their brother or their sister. I love the idea that this is healing some people in some way. It's so humbling and so fucking cool to think when we hear people say, yo, my son's never asked me to do anything with him before but we watch this podcast together. It's like the most gratifying, humbling thing that has happened in my career. I, I can't, I can't express how cool that is to me, but the other thing, and this is, I mean, look, dude, I thought we were close before, you know what this podcast has done, which I like Mm. it's, You've all, I I mean, I think you've always felt free to express yourself in front of me, Mm -hmm. but you've, uh, this podcast and, and not just here, but outside of here 
has made you more comfortable disagreeing with me um, ha- uh, if you're having a bad day, having a bad day in front of me. Like, it's really that that final wall that was maybe there is gone, not just here, but in our everyday life. Mm. It, uh, that has been really amazing to me. Um, and I feel, like I said, I feel so lucky to have this relationship with you. And this, I guess, is a job. Kind of. But it's so fun, you know? And so... That for me, dude, can't could not be replaced by anything. I wish I had the same opportunity to do it with your brother and sister. This has been such a um, bonding experience. So I can't. I, there's no dollar value on this podcast for me. That's all. Awesome. What, what's been happening is to me priceless. My favorite. Okay, I've had a bunch of moments that are super fun Mm. um but i i think the whole urban dictionary thing of me guessing yeah what what these mean has been so much fun yeah i got another good one for you today oh i can't wait i really like it because we get to goof yeah and And goof the entire podcast we goof the entire podcast (laughs) but we get to goof on things that are just like goofy, goofy, yeah, like the right. Idaho potato sack smack or whatever the fuck that was. And it's, it, it is in line with our humor and our relationship. What I like the most about it. Cause we're silly. We're, we're not out here. Mm-hmm. Listen, dude, if you're like, I didn't learn anything that podcast, you're on the right, you got the wrong podcast. Yeah. You got the wrong Unless you're trying to learn what an Idaho potato sack smack is. You got one too many words. Yeah, dude. Idaho potato sack. Okay, whatever. Just get your shit together. It's a smack sack. It's a sack smack in the potato sack. Mac, I'm going to rack. You wait, attack. Wait, wait, what did you say about a rack? You rack the tack with a pack. It's the Mac attack. Rack I thought you sack. said you were in Iraq, and I was like... I'm not in Iraq. No. Iraq, I think is Iraq, what it is. Yeah. But, um, so for me, dude... I, there's so many things, but I'm so grateful. I cannot wait to see, because here's what I think, what makes me so excited is that dude, these are getting better and better. We're really, I think the last three or four, we really figured out how we want to do this. Yeah, yeah. And so I am so excited about what's coming forward. I am a hundred percent confident that there is no podcast out there that is doing what we're doing Mm -hmm. and not, not, not that there's no podcast telling dick jokes. We, we definitely do that, but there's no podcast. You talk about dicks a lot. We do. No, no, you do. Oh, I talk. What do you mean? I talk about dicks a lot. How many, I mean, also you make a lot of gestures about dicks. What? How many times have I gotten you doing the double hand in a, in a, in a podcast? Let's go back to the first statement. What do you mean I talk about dicks a lot? I don't know. I feel like you talk about dicks a little more than I would think, or the average person. You also make a lot of hand gestures about dicks, so. Well, I don't do that on purpose. Like this one. I mean. (laughs) I'm just saying. I don't think I. Clip it. I don't think I talk about dicks a lot. You're going to make. Actions speak louder than words. Okay, but right now I am because you said I talk about no, but dicks. But I a lot. said actions speak louder than words. So sometimes your actions in the podcast, you don't have to talk about dicks, but your actions talk a lot about dicks sometimes. I mean, my, I don't understand what you mean. My actions talk about dicks. You know that thing you just did. Oh, the hand gesture. Those are actions. Those are move movements. Whatever. Yeah, like, but 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 I don't do those. Like I got you doing the double hand one, like four podcasts in a row over a month. No. Yes. No. Yeah. No. Oh, Matt, is that true? Uh, I talked about dicks yesterday? Yeah, but... Okay. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, for this one, when I say you do the double hand one a lot, can you go back and pull up all the clips of him doing the double hand Wait gesture? a Wait a second. Just wait. do a, a, a double hand gesture compilation of Josh Wolf on the Now podcast. I'm going to be self-conscious that I talk about dicks a lot. I, just, I never thought anyone in my life would say to me... <laughs> You know, you talk about dicks a lot. What? You hear what he said? He said it's almost like I, every episode. I talk about dicks every episode? You mentioned dicks every episode. 
but that but that's because of the videos and the news stories. I'm not just coming in. Let's talk about dicks today. That I mean, the top yeah. you bring in the videos. I talk about dicks. This is gonna make me super self conscious. Can't wait. You're gonna forget it by tomorrow, so it's okay. Well, we're not doing a podcast tomorrow, but but, but you're still gonna forget about it by the time the next podcast. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna be real dick conscious. Mean meaning dicks on your mind? No. I'm going to be, <laughs> Which, con- by the way, would further my point, actually. No, I'm going to be dick conscious, meaning I'm not going to be talking about dicks. I want to tell you something else. This entire time I've been saying that, I've been farting into this cushion. That was the longest fart of my life. That it, I pushed it right into the cushion. I don't think you guys are going to smell it, but it's some, the next person who sits in the seat, when they sit in it, it's going to go. <laughs> I love farting into a cushion. Yeah. It, it's one of my favorite things. Well, you know what it is for me? I, so I, I I figured out that I have I was I'm a nervous nervous farter. I figured out very young. I figured it out in fifth grade because when I was taking tests, I would get nervous and I would have to let out, let out little squeakers. And so one time, I got hurt. So from then on, I would always sit on my hoodie that I brought for the day, and so that I could just let you it out. farted into your hoodie. I didn't wear it for the rest of the day, but it was like if I had a test, I'm a I'm a nervous I'm a nervous guy. Oh, because they're hard. The, they're hard I, seats. I yeah. will tell you, the day that planes went from cloth to leather was a real bummer for me, because it's hard to push it into the cushion on the leather. The office seats. When I used to work at Chelsea, I would push so many farts into the cushion. It was probably stained. And then at one point, I would just hit it and walk away, and it was just like. Like a stink bomb. Oh, dude, it was 10 dead farts that just came out like, hello. It was like Halloween. It was like, it's like a haunted mansion. I, I, but I'm going to I'm gonna switch from dicks to farts. Okay. This is what I'm saying why I love this podcast. But I'm not going to. No, I'm not. Do you know what? I'm going to up my game, and I'm going to become a much more mature podcaster. Cap. Let's talk about Cap. our 401ks. I don't even know what that is. Either do I. Yeah. I've heard about them. I think that's something where you put money in and it comes back later. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I always thought 401k. I'm like, are you just giving me $401,000? Like, I'm not sure why it's called a 401k. Uh, I've never had one. Yeah. But I do want to, to the people who are listening and watching, please let me know if you think there's too much cock talk. Oh, what a great name for a podcast. Cock, cock talk? talk? Holy Hilarious. shit. Hilarious. What would they talk about on cock talk? Cox. But like, what about it? Just Cox in general? I like, think you'd talk about dicks and roosters. And South Carolina sports. Nah. Nah. Right, they're not good enough. So it would be gay and C-A-U-L-K. Cock talk. So it would be either... Like cock you put in the wall? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's called a glory hole. Um, uh, by the way, people who poo-poo glory holes... If it wasn't good, they wouldn't have put glory in front of it. They would have put something that sounded worse. Do you know what I mean? It's called a glory hole. That seems great. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Yeah, if it was bad, it would be like a horror hole. Or I mean, sometimes the things that come out of it probably are. Glory hole sounds amazing. I First of all, I'm too... I, I'm way too nervous and germaphobic. So even if I was gay or whatever, I, I couldn't do a glory hole. You just hole. have to be gay to do a glory hole. I think it's usually dude on dude glory hole in the bathrooms. I could be wrong. I could be reading the wrong blogs. You read a lot of blogs about dicks again, apparently. This is just furthering my point, ladies and gentlemen. The new podcast Josh Wolf is starting is called Cock Talk. Cock Talk. And it's not about anything cocks. It's just about cocks. It's dicks, roosters, and fixing your bathtub. Cock Talk. I wonder, but you never know what you're going to talk about on every podcast. I well, listen, dude, you know how good I am at fixing things. Terrible. So C A U L K, that would be a real small part of the of the podcast. Do you even know what it's used for? Cock. Yeah. Yeah, it's to seal things up. It is. It's when there's holes, you put the cock in there. I mean. I, I By could, the way, you see how I just mentioned he talks about dicks a lot, and he's been going on about dicks. Well, for the now, last I'm eight self def- now I'm self. Now I'm self. Eight so, minutes you've been doing this. I'm so self conscious of it now. Are you though? Because you just went on an eight minute spiel about. But I went talk. on eight million, um, eight minute spiel talking about how I don't talk about dicks, and all I did was talk about dicks. Correct. Do you know what I think might be funny though? Is this about dicks? I wanted to write a pilot, a TV show called Dick Jokes. It's about a dude named Dick. 
who who's funny. I don't know anything about else about the pilot. <laughs> yeah, you should. Uh, I should maybe, flush that out a little more yeah, before yeah. I say it out loud. Yeah, maybe not. I love the title, Dick Jokes. Uh, yeah. If there was a if there was a show on Netflix called Dick Jokes, I'd have to read the description. Right, you'd at least go to it. I'd at least read the description. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, if you haven't watched Perfect Couple, awesome. What is Perfect Couple? Show with Nicole Kidman, Liev, Liev Shriver, a couple other people who I don't, Dakota Johnson. I don't know who that is. Dakota Johnson? Bobby Johnson's sister? Fuck is Bobby Johnson? I don't know. Bobby Johnson <laughs> sounds like he should be in Talladega Nights. He does. Um, but, okay. Just getting back to 100 real quick. Jago Wolf. Mm. This, and like I said, I, I would, I, I, because it's been so meaningful to me, I wish I could do something like it with your brother and sister. Um, but this has been the most meaningful thing I've ever done in my 75 year comedy career. I was just, just making the joke before you did. I, I always, here's the funny part. When I talk about your comedy career, I actually never joke about it. I, oh. gi I give you the, the praise for being almost 30 years into this. Well, I mean, I took a bunch of years off of stand up to just write on TV shows. Right. But the drive for it still came back. It overcame you wanting to write and put you back on the road. It did. It did. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, oh, and let's just real quick um, say to everybody listening and watching. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, if you're listening, please go and uh, and rate and subscribe and leave a five star review. It means so much to the podcast. It, the more of those we get, the further up uh, on the homepage we get put, and we get in front of more eyeballs. And that's all I think this podcast needs is eyeballs. I'm super confident in in the show we put out every week and our relationship. Mm -hmm. I also, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. So we'll be in Winnipeg um, with Lee Syatt. Ooh. Um, and then we go Winnipeg. We go Lexington, Kentucky. Then we go Bozeman, Salt Lake City, Boise. All in the same weekend. Yep. And then we have a week off because we're going to see My Chemical Romance for my birthday, motherfucker. Uh, I mean, we have a week off, but we are somewhere that weekend. And we're going to Memphis. Correct. Oh, that's right for that great weed show. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a good time. And then we have to figure out the tickets thing for the Michael Romance. Yes. So that, yeah. Um, yeah. and then um that's it. And, and by the way, also everybody, I just want to say, um, and I've said this a bunch of times. If uh if you wanna get in touch with us, hey man pod with three A's, hey man pod at gmail.com. Um, if you have any questions about parenting or or anything like that. Or if you're a kid, you get questions about your parents. Uh, if you want advice, we love answering advice questions. Uh, but send it in the Hey Man Pod, three A's at gmail.com. And if we read your email on the podcast, you will get two tickets to a show in your area. So come one, come all. Let me just say this before we go any further. I did it again last night in my backyard. It was hot, fire smoke all around me. I cracked open the best day brewing. Yo, dude, the best day. If you like the taste of beer, uh, but you are not drinking booze right now, it's the best taste. It's like a great tasting beer. I, I didn't realize how much I missed the taste of beer. Uh, but last night I was watching Bad Monkey with Vince Vaughn, which is a great series. But I was like, this show makes me want to drink a beer, dude. And I cracked open an IPA from best day. Guys. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I'll tell you, I'll even do this for you. Go get yourself a best day. Send me a picture of you with your best day. If I repost your picture, two tickets to a show. <laughs> it is such a good tasting beer. It is so refreshing. It is so cool to crack a can. You ready for this? Perfect sound effect. If you like it, the dude who runs it is a good dude. He hasn't sold to a huge company. He's keeping it small. He keeps the quality top-notch. Best day brew, everybody. If you like a good taste of beer, but you're not into drinking booze anymore, this is the one for you. Go ahead, Jacob. Uh, you got something for me to start off, actually. I got something for you? An apology. Oh. 
I was trying to go right past. No, you think I'm going to let that slide? Hell no. Nah. Well, everybody, turns out last episode when I was talking about there being two windows in Jacob's room where we grew up in, turns out I was right. No, 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 no. Zero chance you're going to start it like that. Do it right. Turns out I was... I was... Oh, I'll wait here for the next 40 minutes until you say it. <laughs> You're not getting out of it. I'm I was, not saying it for you. You're I saying. was wrong. I apologize. Turns out just one window in that room, and the other window was in the other room that I was just moving over to. Which is what I literally said on the podcast. I don't remember that. But, oh, I'll, well, I'll pull it back up. I don't remember but somebody that. had too much pride to admit that they were wrong in front of a bunch of people. And guess what? Well, You no. had to admit you were wrong anyway. I didn't. Last episode, it wasn't about pride. I was just pretty sure that the, who, who has one window in their room? Me! Yeah, apparently. In both rooms! Yeah. Yeah. That I You knew that you were going to lose when I bet my... Yeah, that's when, when I, I bet my pay for the road. Yeah, that's when I knew on the line. I didn't want to admit it at the time, but that's when I was like, "Oh, he's pretty sure." Because by the way, I would have had to get a job at McDonald's. Had why McDonald's? Somewhere I don't know. Someone who was hiring, I have to get a quick job real quick. Ba 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 ba. Like I, there was there was zero chance I was wrong on that. Yeah, I'm a little I'm a little I'm a little bummed out, but happy. Uh, not happy. I don't like admitting that I'm wrong. I know. And I don't know why you felt uh, the need to make me do it in front of all oh, of these people. Well, because you said you were going to do it. And then I knew you were going to back out of it <laughs> and hope that I would forget. But it's been the only thing on my mind for the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, so, you know. All right. Nice well, try. There you go, everybody. Turns out Jacob was right once. And. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Turns out one time Jacob was right. And I was wrong, but that won't happen very often. Back to more dick jokes. Damn it. Damn it. Son of a beeswax. All right. That lasted six minutes. Not even. <laughs> yeah, not even. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a... <laughs> That was a good one for me. Yeah. I've had, I've, by the way, I've got it planted in his head now, so now it's just... I'm just second-guessing everything I'm about to say. Uh, all right. Go ahead. What um, you got? I do have some videos I would like to show you. Um, so I want to just... Just no context. Can I Can I ask, mm -hmm. how do you pick the videos for the podcast? I'm so oh, I legit... I see a video on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I think it is something that will... That makes me laugh and that will make you laugh. And I just send it over to the Heyman Instagram, and then I pull them up. So, so, so you, the only, and this is why I love these videos. I think I'm not gonna look yet, but your only criteria, this is what's great, is videos that you think will make one of us laugh. No, no, make you laugh. Make me laugh. Because I, I'm either looking at them like what the hell, or I'm laughing at it, and I go, Dad will think this is funny. Yeah. And so I send it to the to the to the uh, the Heyman uh, Instagram, and they don't all have like. You know, they don't all have to be the same type of video, but right. they're all kind of around the same, like the videos I've shown you before, like they're, they're all kind of in the same childish realm that we enjoy. You know me. I like people falling down. Yep. I like writing the nuts. Yeah. This one, I don't know if you're going to like strictly laugh at, but I think you're going to be more stunned and have a lot of questions. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Matt, you ready? Wait a second. Right away for anybody who knows this, this is for Sarah Colonna, Brad Wallach. Jen Kirkman, Chris Franjola, Fortune Feimster, everybody else, Heather McDonald, Chelsea Handler. Is that Dan Mario? Dan wish he looks that good in a dress. Dan looked great in a dress, Dan dude. Dan did look good in a dress. Is that Dan Mario, everybody? No, it's a guy named Steez Nuts. Okay. Hit it. What? What's happening? How? But how do I know... That's hanging. Do we have volume? How do I know that's hanging? That is bananas. He's in heels on top of that, by the way, and now he's squatting. Okay, but here's my question. What is it attached to? How do we know? His name is Steve's Nuts. It's attached to his nuts? Well, it's got to be attached to the nuts of the dick the way it's swinging. I don't think it could be in the butthole. 
No, but now that I'm looking at it truthfully, like not the nut part, but if you look up around his waist where the thing is swinging, yeah. it almost looks like it's around, tied his, around waist. his waist. Yeah. See, this is my thing. Like without Steve's nuts, because you don't need a dress that long to do this. You could have hemmed up some short shorts. So I hate to call bullshit on Steve's nuts, but I'm going to need because that more one, proof. That one with the 10 bricks, I think would legitimately rip his nuts off. My thing is this, you if you're if it's around your nuts, you're not wearing anything that loose. I call bullshit on Dan Mario Sr. with this around his nuts. I wish it was around his nuts, and here's what I would say. I don't want to see his nuts, but in order to verify the video, I would be okay with seeing his nuts. Because what's the, what's it? So you tie it around the bag? Is that the idea? Uh, oh, oh, why are you asking me? I don't know. You're the dick expert over here. I am, but this is nuts. So if I'm dick, you're nuts. <laughs> that's not a good trade. That's not what I, that's not the trade that works out for that. Um, but yeah, yeah I, 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 I saw this and immediately just like, I had my concerns, but I also just wanted well, us to talk about it. Well, I would, I would say, I in this particular here's what's impressive on heels on that in general to me is impressive. Yep. But I'm going to call bullshit on Steve's nuts. I am also cuz it really like it looks like it's swinging from so high up. I agree. Like I agree. If it was not, it would be like right where his hands are. But it, that that's that chain looks like it goes ah, all the way up. Yeah. 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 Well, I just wanted to share that one with you. I do. And by fun. the way, Prove me wrong, Steve's nuts. Yeah. Is there anything I need to know going into this next video? Nope. Wait, he's was that a meow? Did he meow while he hit himself in the nuts? He, this is was that a didgeridoo? I don't know what it was. What is happening? I want you all to know that it, even with a cup, that hurts. hurts. Is that a brick now that he's doing it with? This no, this is why I was scared to check his page. Meow, meow. He said meow meow. I love the meow meow. 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 Oh, dude. Be guys, even if this is straight on dick shot, that is meow. the meow meow is my is meowing is wild. It's a, that's the most disturbing part. The meow meow. Yeah. That is so disturbing. I. I. I'm I, I'm I'm fascinated by why he's meowing right i mean yeah no no I, i'm fascinated by a lot of things the didgeridoo to the nuts is crazy it doesn't look like a didgeridoo it just looks like a, a pvc pipe wrapped in foam that's a didgeridoo do you know what a didgeridoo is it's uh, a musical instrument yeah a pvc pipe covered in foam is not a didgeridoo you just sound like you're having a stroke <laughs> It doesn't sound like an instrument. It That's like, what a didgeridoo it sounded like a medical emergency. <laughs> you done, Sleepy Joe? <laughs> I I am now back on Team Steve's nuts. All yeah, right. that was nuts. That was nuts. Yeah, no pun intended, or all pun intended. Whatever all right. we do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Can we hear this with? Okay. Well, it sounds like he's doing meow meow again, but I'm not. Meow meow. Yeah. Well, now I believe it. <laughs> Dude, I Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you why I believe it now. Can yeah, I tell you yeah. why? Can I tell you why I believe it now? That exhale, you you can't fake that. You can't fake that far. Yeah, but also if you're squatting with that around your waist, you're doing an exhale anyways. That's nah, still hard. not that. Not that kind of that exhale is like a, cause I work out. That's not how I exhale when I squat. That one was like a, whew, I better be careful with this. That was sound on. I believe it more. I still would like to see a little more nut, like a shorter skirt. I don't want to see the nut, but I need to see a shorter skirt to make sure that we're not dealing with a waist shot. And that is around the nuts. Although he may need a dress that long. His nuts may be so long. Yeah, he his nuts, that he's been pulling. His nuts might have been used as the prosthetics for the Johnny Knoxville nuts and jackass. Dude, like his nuts are between smushing him on the wood and stretching him with the bricks. He can't have kids. 
I, they just got to be misshapen in such a crazy way. It's these nuts. Reach my out to us. My I, dad would like to see your nuts. I, I don't want... No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's be clear. But I do... I wouldn't mind talking to you if, you, if that is something that you were up for. I, I would love to have a... Oh, yeah, I would definitely have a conversation with him. I okay. definitely have some questions. What else you got? Okay, the next video, now that we have sound, is very important. Uh, well, the sound is very important. Okay. So we're just going to show you this next video. Again, no context. This is for sure something that, again, made me laugh, and I think 100% will make you laugh. So... This is a guy who taught his dog a new trick. Okay. Hit it. Oh, uh, y'all. Make him do it again. Good boy. Sit. Okay. Huh? Oh, boy. Other thought? Okay. Ready? Fart. <laughs> Look at this dog, y'all. Make him do it again. Good boy. Sit. Okay. Huh? Oh, boy. Other thought? Okay. Ready? Fart. Now, by the way, uh, I can't way, guarantee that that's not the dude. 100%. Or but, the dude behind the camera. 100%. But, still but either way, funny. Yeah. That's what one person says. Nice cover. We all know where that came from. That does sound... It sounds like a human fart. do it again. Because most dog farts are more... Nah, dude. Indiana Jones, when I was watching him the, the, the other week, he legit let out a couple human farts. That was... Amazing. That does sound close to one that I would drop. Yeah, hundred percent. But either way, I'm just for the sake of the the mystery of the Amazing. video, keeping him going with that, like that is I, super funny to me. Dog farts, by the way, are so gross, the worst. But I I I do love the eye contact when they fart. Oh yeah, just like a straight. It's either it's either in their sleep and it wakes them up, or they're staring directly at you and they let it rip. Do you know what I love? I love when I'm walking up the stairs and Indiana's walking behind me and I fart. And you when give I him pink eye, when I fart, don't give him pink eye. What I love is when I fart, he stops and he lets me go a couple steps and then he comes. He's oh. like, Nah, I'm not falling for that again. Yeah, you farted in his face too many times, probably. Well, I mean, yeah, not I think on one is probably too many. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 when you say I don't fart in his face on purpose. I don't plan it. He just happens to be walking behind you. Yeah, but I'm not avoiding it. Well, that's, I think, animal cruelty. Uh, maybe. But he, he and I, pink eye, it will be. He and I are buddies. Yeah, it, that might be for weird reasons. I, he likes the smell of your ass, which is not good. I don't know if that's true. I what do you mean not. likes the smell of my ass? Dogs like to smell each other's asses. Yeah, but I'm not a dog. But you're another animal. Huh? People are animals, technically. Yeah. So, you know, it is a real weird, well, we don't need to get into that, but mm -hmm. it is like a, I don't know exactly what, I don't know enough about dogs to know what scent is coming out of the butthole. Like what character trait does it tell you? Well, it's like, butthole, I, well, I don't know what it is, but it's like, you know, it's the, it's the, the delicates. It's the butthole, the genitalia. So I mean, when you Google, what are dogs learning when they smell each other's butthole? I'm going to just say, why do dogs? I mean, it, it, I, I can't believe I haven't asked myself that question before. It, I mean, what are they learning? They're not learning. I, 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 what could you learn from that? Like what they ate? I'm not sure what the deal is. Do you learn if, if, if a dog is like aggressive through smelling their butthole? Um, for a number of reasons. One, for a greeting. Dogs sniff each other's butts as a way to say hello. The scent from a dog's anal gland is unique to each dog, so they can quickly tell if they've met before. Establishing dominance. The way a dog sniffs another dog's butt can indicate which dog is dominant. The dominant dog will usually start the sniffing while the other dog waits. Uh, it's okay. a calming mechanism for other dogs helping to relieve stress. To get their butthole sniffed? No, to sniff, butt to sniff buttholes. Oh, yeah, I could see why getting your butthole sniffed might calm you down. Uh, finding a mate. Uh... It determines, you know, I get that one. Yep. Uh, determining if another dog is taken. Huh? Dogs may sniff another dog's butt to see if they're already in a relationship. This is an AI. That's not true. There's no way. Chemical communication. Dogs use their sense of smell to gather information about other dogs, such as their diet, gender, emotional state, and health. Dogs have a second olfactory system in their nose called the Jacobson's organ, which is specifically designed for chemical communication. Jacobson's? Yeah, Jacobson's. Let me tell you something. How crazy is that that you sniff a butthole to be like, yeah, you're my bride? Yeah. As a, but but I, the other ones make sense to me, for sure. That all makes sense. Dominance. 
uh, I, 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 all that stuff makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. I'm yeah, that makes sense. You had a thought there. Any thought? Uh, yeah. My thought is like, you know, it's kind of like pheromones for yeah people, right? 100%. Okay. All right. Oh, on a dog note, I'm so sorry. On a not anal related dog note, um, you guys might what we're talking about sniffing each other's butts. I'm not talking about. Hey, shut up. Anyway, um, so you guys may remember a little while ago when I started doing the uh the videos with dogs and shelters. Uh, the very first one that I did was for a dog named Moki. Uh, Moki was Love around Moki. then, an eight to nine year old pitbull. Uh, at, soul dog, I won't say, but an extreme connection I had to this guy. Fostered him for a couple of days. And absolutely bawled my eyes out bringing him back to the shelter. Because it just crushed me. Because he's such a good dog. He deserves a home. And he ended up being adopted two days later. I got a text two days ago from my buddy who still works at the shelter. Moki is back at Nevada SPCA. Not for anything that he did wrong. Unfortunately, somehow, in the last year, both of his owners have passed away. Oh, my Lord. So, unbeknownst to him, he had no idea what happened. When the owners were taken out of the house, Moki was left by himself in an, in a house alone with nothing for six weeks. But dead bodies? No, dude. I just said the owners were taken out. Well, the owners were taken out, but whoever took the owners out left the dog there? They, let me explain. Yeah. So Moki was left in that house for six weeks. Okay. And this is why. The, the woman, after her husband passed away, the woman took the dog. And she, in order to keep people away from her house or to come see her or the dog, she told everybody that Moki was vicious. So when everyone would, was thinking to try and to get into the house to try and get the dog out, Moki would bark. Not because he was vicious, but because he was scared. Moki would not hurt a fly. Moki is one of the nicest yeah, dogs, greatest souls I've ever met in my entire life. He is back at Nevada SPCA, okay? And so I'm pleading with everybody, anyone in Vegas who wants a, he's now a 10-year-old senior pit. He is still got great energy. He's so sweet. So sweet, moves around great. And truthfully, 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 just wants somebody to hang out with for his last couple of years. So please, I am pleading with people. Please, please, please go get my little fella out of that shelter. Dude. He does not deserve to be there. None of the dogs deserve to be there. But this guy got false hope for a year and just has no idea what happened. He was with best friends and then was alone for six weeks and now is back in what I would consider a jail cell for those animals. Not because the facility is bad, but because, they're, you know, they're legit in a little kennel where they have nowhere to go and they're fed at certain times and let out to go to the bathroom. Like to them, it's, it's, a, it's a punishment. There's no reason for him or any of the other animals there to be in that situation because they were failed by humans. Okay. So please not only just go see him, go see any of the dogs, the animals, uh, the, uh, at the, uh, Nevada SPCA or at the animal foundation in Las Vegas. I, in a fun fact, it is the absolute hundred percent, the largest shelter in the country. They house close to a thousand different types mm. of animals at one time. They have 500 dogs at once. And unfortunately they are a kill shelter. So please, please, please guys go, go save an animal, go to your local shelter. If you're in Vegas, go check those out. But for the love of God, somebody go save Moki. Okay. I would have already had him in my house when I met him, if I could, but if I, but since I can't, I need someone else or somebody, 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 please go save that little fella. It, I was crying in a target when I got that text message. I'm selfish. I'm so selfishly happy because I got to go see him the next day and hang out with him for a couple hours. And it was amazing to see him again. He did remember me. He, he ran up, galloped, ran up to me. I got a couple cuts on me, but like go save that little fella and go save all those other animals. Please, please, please. Moki and the rest of those animals deserve a home. That's my spiel. Thank you, dude. I, I want to say no jokes. I'm so proud of you. And, you know, I know you go there every week and donate time and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I'm so proud of you, man, for using your platform and finding it's important to give back. No matter what, where you are in your life, financially, whatever, whether you're giving back with finances or time mm -hmm. or emotion or or kindness, it's important to give back or to give to people. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really, and be generous with your, however you want to be generous. I'm not just, I think it's so important and I'm so proud of you, dude. Yeah, and, and how much you put into this. You're a good dude, man. You got a great heart. I, I, you've always been a sensitive guy mm -hmm. with your emotions and the tears are something that I'm so 
happy that you still allow yourself to feel. Mm -hmm. Because some do, you know, some guy, time when you get older, especially as a guy, you're like, I'm not fucking crying. But you have always been very open and confident with who you are. Yeah. And your emotions have never scared you. And, mm. I'm, and I'm super proud of you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Go, go save a dog. Adopt, don't shop. That's all I got to say for that. I wish Indiana Jones would be cool with me getting another dog. Me too with Milo, because I would have already had Moki. I would have had... It's, it's Indiana Jones and your mom. It's a, it'd be a tough... It's tough for mom. It'd be tough on he's her to get another he's dog. He's already enough to handle. He's a lot. He's a lot. He's a, a, a menace to society. He is a lot, dude. Straight up menace. He... um has decided that like if it's when as soon as the sun goes down he's ready to go to sleep so when it's dark so daylight savings when it goes back when it it's the fall yeah and it's five o'clock he's asleep by 5 30 it's crazy but he sleeps in the main living area yeah. for us mm. and so he gets mad yeah if we watch tv on the couch in the living room he barks at us if he's going to sleep like hey dude Oh, he did, he Get did, the fuck out of my room. He didn't do that for me when I watched him. Oh, dude. He he would come up and bug me and be like, hey, man. And I'd be like, hey, dude, it, I'm not your parents. They don't, I don't go to bed at 8 p.m. I'm going to be sitting in here watching TV or playing video games, but I'll turn all the lights off. Oh, what do you wait at 8 p.m.? Am I wrong? No. Yeah, exactly. I, I, you know, we're going to see grandma and grandpa, you know, when you're in London. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my mom was like, uh, uh, what time do you want to eat? Uh, she said, I, we'd love to eat by six. And I'm like, six seems late. How about five? <laughs> she said, now you're talking our late. Oh, five o'clock dinner, home by 6.30, in bed by 7.15. Eat a dick. Ah, damn it. And on that note, let's do our Urban Dictionary term and then get out of here. Josh Wolf, your Urban Dictionary term of the day is a Green Bay butter churner. All right. So, butter churner. Okay. Does, is it, okay. First of all, is it Green Bay specific? This is really important. Yes. It is. Yes. Well, Green Bay is cheese. Um, I guess cows. Green Bay. All right. Butter churner. Does it have to do with using your hands? No. Mm. Does it have to do with not literally, but a stirring motion? Uh, Matt, would you consider it a stirring motion? No, yeah, I wouldn't either. Does it have to do Green Bay butter churner? Just, you know what a butter churner is, right? Yeah, it's this. You churn butter. That's. Not that's also they, the cabbage patch. That's not how they churn butter. It isn't? No. How do they churn butter? I'm not doing that. It's two hands, yeah, and that, but it's not a stir. It's a, it's an up and down motion. They churn butter like this? Hey, can we add, can we add something in post for that? Uh, I, okay. So it doesn't have to do with the hands. No. And it doesn't, and you're not, okay. But you're doing this? Damn it. <laughs> okay. So, does it have to do with the penis? I mean, yes, it's involved. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is involved. I didn't want to ask that question because I didn't want to be pigeonholed as the dick talker. It is involved, yes. All right. Is it, does it have to do with the booty hole? Yes. Okay. So, that's four. You get one more question and then a guess. All right. Is there cheese involved? No. Okay. All right, you get a guess. Okay, it's when you put milk in somebody's butthole, and you and you you put your penis in there, and you make butter. Correct. Is that it? Correct. Fuck yeah! Is <laughs> uh, that right? A, lar a green bay <laughs> butter churner. Let's go! <laughs> a large quantity. King of the cock talk. <laughs> Fuck yeah! I can't believe I'm so excited that I got that right. That that's, is that's so why you talk weird. about dicks a lot. Yeah. Okay, ready? Are you done accelerating so I can tell you what it is? Accelerating? Celebrating. Is oh, I, I thought said. you said accelerating. A Green Bay butter churner is when a large quantity of milk is inserted into a willing participant's anus. I love how they always put willing, willing. participants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like it. It's, you know, you know I, I, consent. You, yeah. It's good. 
Uh, the participant then engages in anal sex until the milk turns into butter. The butter is then extracted and served over toast. Bonus points if the milk is used from a procured, uh, is the milk is procured from a lactating woman. Whoa. Whoa. Why are we using the butter and why toast in particular? That's not a question that I can answer for you. I, I, are, I mean, I feel like it would be a waste if you made the butter and didn't use it. Are you surprised? You know what I mean? Like, are you surprised? <laughs> That's literal brown butter. Are you surprised? Not clean. If you're if the butter's in your butthole, there's some shit coming out. I'm pretty sure you can clean your butthole and I, like. Don't ask me how I know this, but when porn stars go to do a scene, get it? I understand that they have like they don't eat for twelve hours and they do a cleaning process. I get so, it. Like, however, it's if you tested that butter, are you telling me there'd be no fecal matter on it? I mean, I'm not saying there probably wouldn't be a thousand percent fecal matter. I don't care how much you clean it. There's still some shit on the plate. Uh, but are you surprised? You disagree? No, I, I said I don't disagree with that. Are you surprised that with the questions that I asked, that I got that right? No, because I think you ask questions to eliminate things off the table because you already had an idea of what it would be. Especially after I gave you the butter churner, like actually, like it's legitimately churning butter. Yeah. Like you were, you were, I, I, I figured you were thinking pretty literally until you didn't know how to churn butter. And then once you asked a couple questions and got a couple yeses and a couple no's, you were able to do a process of elimination. Listen, dude, I feel like... Um, You're getting better at this, by the way. I really am. Yeah. You might have to start throwing me for a little loop-de-loop. -loop. You know what I else did, I think? By the, by the way, I didn't think, I didn't think you'd be too familiar with a Green Bay butter churner. I wasn't familiar with it. You seemed pretty familiar with it. Familiar in what way? You knew what it was. I didn't. I didn't know what it was. Well, I you mean, you, guessed what it was. You know what I want to challenge the listeners to and watchers? If you have a term that's from a urban dictionary you want us to use, or if you want to make one up and we read it on the podcast, heymanpod, three A's, at gmail.com, two tickets to the show. Okay. Um, oh, I also want to mention, guys, I will be um, at my special drops October 2nd. Nice. It's called Four Stories. It's, I'm so proud of it. It's something, I promise you the way we shot it, uh, what we left in, how raw it is. It's not something you've ever seen before. And um, it's like, as far as storytelling, you know, dude, there's Ron White, there's Joe Diaz, there's Ali Sadiq. I think those people are all expert storytellers. Yeah. Um, Josh Wolf in that category too. Yeah, man. I, I would say I feel very confident right now. I, I'm not saying there's anybody. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I don't know that anybody, although Ron White and Joey to me are probably top of the food chain. Sure. But I feel like, guys, this is a special, man. If you like me, you like my comedy, you're going to love this. We're going to figure out some contest, Matt, where somebody gets tickets to a show, but also plane tickets to come see us. Oh, interesting. It'll have to do with the special. I don't know if it'll be, I don't know what it'll be, but, but we'll figure, figure it, out. it out. And, uh, I mean, that's all I got. That's all right, it. Man. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. We really appreciate you. Uh, cheers to this hundredth and cheers to more than a hundred more. Um, thank you to everyone who's been here from the beginning, who just chopped on for the ride and for all the people we're going to see in the future. Again, thank you. None of this is possible without you. Comedian Joshua.com for tour dates and tickets. Go to the link on that website. Okay. Go to the link on that website. That will take you to not a third party. You get the right price tickets. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. It's Shake Wolf on uh, TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. And as always, do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. Love you guys. Later. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.